Okay, more on the extruder multiplier calibration. So I was really thinking we were onto something there because the over uh, extrusion symptom seemed like something I have experienced a couple times, particularly with this blue PETG. Now this PETG, I'll show my filaments here in a little bit. Um, I've got a bunch of filament here and I bought a lot of these Amazon Basics filament. and. You know, I thought later, why did I buy so much of the same brand? And it was just because it was easy, it was online, they had some pretty good reviews. Um, it looked like the reviews were real, I don't know, you know, sometimes you can't tell, but... Uh, so I, you know, I, and I haven't had a lot of problems with it, I just had a couple problems with it, so, you know, as far as I know, it's, it's as good as any other filament. Um, I have tried since then, I bought some inland filament, and I bought uh, just recently some yellow. Let me see some of these yellow parts here, this is... Uh, um, Hatchbox filament, which is a, apparently a name brand, so um, you know, and it's great too. But I haven't really seen a big difference or anything. So uh, at the moment, um, I don't know that this is any worse or better than any other filament. Uh, it may not be as consistent. And I think you know, here you can see at the top, you see this little blob right there that came off this part here. And uh, this part is is a, actually a tool to bend this piece of plastic here around to make it fit onto this awesome truck that we're building here. I don't know if you can see that. There's a, a dump truck there. It's a Caterpillar. Uh, let me see if I can get it to focus. A little better. There you go. Um, that's a Caterpillar truck I'm printing right now. And it's an awesome print. It's on Thingiverse. And uh, uh, the guy uh, has all these really nice parts. It's not super complicated, but it's uh, it's not super detailed, but it just looks really good. So anyway, um, I'll be making a video about that, I'm sure, in a little bit. For now, let's get back to this calibration. So the way this is supposed to work, you print this cube. This cube has a single wall, and that single wall is supposed to be uh, 0.45 millimeters. Now to measure that, they warn that your standard, typical, cheap digital calipers like this are probably not accurate enough. But, um, so that's why I've got these. Also, this is a really nice Matoyo caliper. You won't have any problem with this, but the problem is, I don't have the battery for this one, so I can't switch it between inches and millimeters and read the digital readout, but it does have a vernier scale here, which reads in thousandths of an inch, so we can check it with that. So first, what I'm gonna do, and I've already checked this, and, and I already noticed that I don't think I need to make any change, and, but I'll show you why here. So let's, uh, let's turn this on, and uh, make sure it's zeroed out here at the, at the beginning. Okay, so we're on absolute mode there we're at zero and uh, we'll just measure the inside here and we get 46 there so we're just a little over according to this of course like I said we're not going to trust that but we're at 46 there and uh, oh, wow 47 there so even a little bit more and 46 there Let's see was that all four I think that was all four 47 okay 46 again so if we switch to inches the reason I, I wanted to do that is we see 46 there if I switch to inches we see 0 0.18 0 0.185 right and so if I go back to millimeters and I set this at four or five which is going to be kind of hard to do <laughs> well, here let me put it on here it'll be easier if I can get this to go to four find a spot that's four or five there we go, four or five, exactly. And then I switch to inches, you can see it's 175, all right? So 175 thousandths, all right? Or 17 and a half thousandths is um, the desired width. It's 0 0.0045 millimeters, or 0.45 millimeters. So let's get the Toyo out, we can read can we focus on it uh, that close? Yes, we can. So you can see the Vernier scale there, right? And as we read it, so this is one thousandth, you know, we have five thousandths, right? We can go all the way to ten thousandths and so forth. And so we'll put this, we'll spread this around and we'll see where it fits. So we'll get this spun open here a little bit. And then we'll put that over there and we'll get it right in the middle. And we'll close in on it until it just starts to touch right about there and what do we have it looks like 
looks like we have about 17 and a half, <laughs> which is just about perfect, right? I mean, <laughs> and that's exactly what we want, right? And, and if I move it to the other side, and just enough to, you know, I'm not, I'm not clamping it down. I just until it touches and, and, it, and there we are again, you know, right in between 17 and 18. So that, that's where it needs to be, right? And uh, so I'm really thinking I don't want to adjust my multiplier just yet. Now it's not super consistent, maybe, and, and that might be the problem. Because as you saw when I used the other caliper, which is really reading the whole, the whole slide because it's got you know a pincher, whereas this is smaller and it's just pinching in the middle. So this is going to be more accurate, and obviously it's a better, for one, it's a better tool. Uh, so it's a name brand, awesome caliper. Uh, so it's going to be more accurate, and uh, assuming it's calibrated properly, which I assume it is. And uh, but also because you know I'm pinching it here in the middle instead of on the side. So at the moment. I think I'm going to leave my multiplier alone, but at the same time, I can't get over the feeling that some of those symptoms that I'm seeing um, are an over-extrusion symptom, right? I mean